Welcome back to Approved Unto God. I'm Joshua Govitz. We're in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 30. Uh, not too much longer. Chapter 30 and 31, that's all we got left. It's been a couple years, but uh, hopefully we can work our way through this pretty quickly, this uh, remaining couple chapters. I don't want to look too deep. I just want to see what's on the surface here. And, and that's what I actually intended to do when I taught James also, but... That last one on envy, we had to kind of look a little bit deeper because the scripture says, Do you think that the scripture saith in vain that the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Well, we ought to go through some scriptures and show that it doesn't. Uh, you know, so otherwise it's kind of weird to kind of leave that empty and not really go and expound upon that a little bit by showing some examples. So now we're going to go into Proverbs chapter number 30. And this is kind of a strange uh, proverb. You know, most of the proverbs were written by Solomon up until this point. Um, here we have the words of somebody else. It's the words of Agar, the son of Jacob. Even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Ukul. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. And we'll stop there. Father, Lord, please bless your word. I pray, God, you fill me with your spirit. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. There's nothing here that can please you in this flesh, Lord, but if I could be yielded to your spirit, I know that that work could please you, Lord. And I, I pray that this teaching would be approved unto you and that, Lord, you would give me the understanding. Help me to relay it to others. In Jesus' name, amen. The words of Agar the son of Jacob. Not anywhere else I'm, uh, that I know of is this really mentioned, Agar. Let's see here. Uh, Dake has a note. Who the men of this verse were is unknown. The Talmud says, which we're not going by that, but the Talmud says, says Solomon was called by six names. Solomon, Jedidiah, and it says 2 Samuel 12, 25, Koheleth, son of Jacob, Agar, and Lemuel. This much is certain. Agar was the son of Jacob, and he uttered a prophecy to Ithiel and Ukul. We can accept these facts as literal as much as we can accept the minor prophets, some of whom are as little known as these men. You know, I'm not worried too much about this identity possibly being Solomon. I don't think it's talking about Solomon. Because we're talking about a man who says he's brutish and doesn't have any understanding. <laughs> doesn't have the understanding of a man. Well, I don't think that could be said of Solomon, uh, as God had given him wisdom beyond any man that ever lived. The words of Agar, the son of Jacob, even the prophecy. So we have a man here that we know very little about, little to nothing about, but yet God revealed to him a prophecy but as Dake also says that these minor prophets we know very little about but God also revealed to them prophecy and you know the world can know very little about you and the Christian community can know very little about you or the camp that you're in whether you're a Ruckmanite or you're uh, you know in a like James Knox camp or you know it used to be Hiles camp and or some kind of Steven Anderson, I guess, if you're not saved camp. Um, <laughs> I guess we could say the same for Hiles. Um, all that easy believism camp that took away repentance, you know. And you might be an unknown preacher. You might be a person who is not well esteemed amongst the brethren. But you know that God can still reveal to you. God can re reveal prophecy to you if you are of a humble heart. If you spend the time in the word, if you spend the time in meditation, if you ask God for wisdom, he will give it. Um, and I think there's wisdom in his approach. And I think the, the reason why he got such great prophecy here is because of his heart's attitude. His attitude is that he's nothing. He's a nobody. He is not someone special, which some of, some of us, we tend to think we are. You know, we're pretty big fans of ourselves. The words of Agar, son of Jacob, even the prophecy, he received a prophecy from God. You want to receive something from God? 
it takes humility. The man spake unto Ethiel, even on Ithiel and Ukel. And you also have to understand that God is not going to invest prophecy in you. He's not going to invest foreknowledge or some sort of understanding of what's to come in you if you are not going to speak out and teach others. I do believe that God invests a special amount of knowledge to those that are teachers, those that will teach others. If you, If all you're about is just gaining knowledge but you have no interest in relaying that knowledge. You just want to soak it up like a sponge, but yet that sponge is never wrung out. If you sit in church and that, just like that uh, Jordan River goes into that body of water, the Dead Sea, but yet there is no outlet, no outlet to give out what comes in. Fresh water goes in, but the water stagnates and dies, and it's a salty, dead mess and you know what nothing grows in there there's no fish in there you're not going to get any fruit you're not going to win anybody to the lord you're not going to do anything with the knowledge you have if all you do is soak it in and you just want to build your intellect maybe every once in a while it comes out in an argument every once in a while it comes out when you're trying to sound smart and you're trying to prove to everybody and prove to the world how great of understanding you have of the word of god <laughs> But if you're a person that wants to not just receive, but you want to give also, you're, you're giving out what God has given you. God is going to invest in that type of person. He will invest his knowledge. Surely I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. He calls himself brutish. We see that word also in the New Testament, talking about uh, some people that, Paul encountered I believe he called brutish <laughs> you know but these brutish men if they would humble themselves God would, would reveal himself to them it doesn't take a scholar it doesn't take uh, some kind of know-it-all God actually resists those that's your handicap if you know everything but if you're brutish and claim to have no understanding, God says, oh, perfect. That's what I'm looking for. I will show myself to you. I will give my knowledge to you. I will give my wisdom to you. I will give my understanding to you. I will give my prophecy to you. I will teach it to you and, and out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> you know, this is a babe right here giving us some of the greatest knowledge of, of the Messiah of Jesus Christ that that we've ever seen and why because he was brutish in his own heart he was a nobody he said I don't even have the understanding of a man he he treats himself like he's a brute beast and we know in the New Testament the Bible talks about brute beasts being made to dis to be destroyed over there in Jude but this man he he doesn't think anything very highly of himself he wouldn't even talk about God saving him and, and that he couldn't even go to hell if he tried he, if he hung over hell and swung across some kind of wet noodle and if the noodle broke and then God would have to move hell because you know he's just so great <laughs> he would never talk foolish like that he would say I deserve to burn in hell on my best day on the day that God gave me this prophecy I deserve hellfire that's the kind of man he was the words of Agar he has no, not even the understanding of a man. What kind of understanding do you have? Oh, I know all the dispensations. Oh, I can rightly divide. Oh, I got the right Bible. I got that King James Bible. I do too. But when's the last time you obeyed it? Not just heady stuff. Just, oh, I know all about Leviathan. Oh, I know all about that manna that they ate and how that was Leviathan. And I know all about that Antichrist. And I know all about, you know, the mermaids and, the uh, you know, mixtures of man and animal and, uh, excuse me, uh, and uh, also of the fallen angels with the women. And I know about the giants in the earth. And, oh, that's great. <laughs> how do you treat your wife? Who cares? You know, most of what we see in Christianity on YouTube nowadays is just about the weird things. It's You can go through the average channel 
and I hate to pick on the Ruckmanites, but especially the Ruckmanites, and and everything is about witchcraft. Everything is about satyrs. Everything is about the the millennial reign. Everything is about you know the the pre-flood world or the the gap theory or you know it's about Melchizedek. It's about but what about anything practical? You can look. Here's one message, not practical. It requires nothing of you. Here's another message. The next one down. I I, I encourage you to look requires nothing of you here's another one requires nothing other not requires nothing other requires nothing of you I, i'm telling you that's the average channel nowadays but what about practical things what about things that are going to actually require something of you it's required of a steward that he be found faithful god requires things of us don't think that all he requires of you is knowledge because that <laughs> that's about the least he requires add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge I believe temperance and you know but knowledge is not the first thing and that's the problem I think with uh, modern day Christianity we have a lot of knowledge But we haven't established a much character, much vir virtue. And God would have you to first have virtue. And when knowledge comes first, knowledge puffeth up. And we also know of God requiring man, man not to be a man that desires the office of a bishop, not to be a novice, lest he being lifted up with pride falls into condemnation of the devil. You know what lifts you up with pride? Having a head full of knowledge. Uh, going to Bible college and all that and just barely being wet behind the ears having no life experience having never really sat very long under a preacher having not ever submitted to any kind of authority you don't barely submit under the authority of your parents and you had to move out right away because you know that you weren't going to be under them and under their rules and you know and then you're under a pastor for six months and then you go to Bible college and you know you're just you haven't humbled yourself and, and and shown that you could be a good follower. How are you going to be a good leader? Jesus Christ submitted himself to the, himself to the will of the Father, and he also submitted himself to teachers, submitted himself to his parents, submitted himself to uh, to the authorities even at his crucifixion when they came to take him. He knocked them back, but then he went along with them. He submitted himself even to uh, the crucifixion. I mean, we see Jesus submit himself to governments. But then also we see in Jude those that speak evil of dignities and all this, and they don't know what they're talking about, and they're like brute beasts that made to be, they're, they, they're made to be destroyed. Uh, while they seem to know, they think they know, but they don't really know. They don't understand submission. And oftentimes that's a telltale sign of a false teacher. Somebody that can't submit to authority. I don't believe that's a God, a God called person. That's a self called person. All right, we were going all around on that. Surely I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom. So what are you doing talking? <laughs> that would be the first question. I, you, you have not learned wisdom, but yet he has wisdom. But if we read a little further, he says, I neither learned wisdom. You know what? I, I don't think he may have had great teachers. And sometimes you would assume, well, who, who have you sat under or who, who's your influences? What preachers do you listen to? Well, I don't really listen to preachers. You ever met somebody like that? They don't really listen to much preaching or anything, but yet they spend a lot of time in the Word of God and they, they're in the Bible for hours. And they're humble people. They, they don't really seem, you, don't, you can't really detect pride in them. And, but yet they seem to know so much about God, not just about the Bible, but they know the God of the Bible. And God has invested in them because they've invested their time and, and showed how important the Word of God is in our life. And also that they apply the things of this book 
to their life. It's not about just headiness. It's, they, they're getting wisdom. They didn't learn it from man. They learned it directly from God. God is the giver of all wisdom, ultimately. Yes, he can give wisdom to others, and through others you can learn. But how much more pure is that wisdom when it is descendeth down from, from above and it comes from God directly to you, to the humble heart? So this man has not learned wisdom, nor have the not. He said, I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy. <laughs> but he sure seems to have some knowledge of the holy. But I think he speaks very, very humbly, you know. Be careful of somebody who just brags about how much they know. So this guy hasn't been to Bible college. This guy has not sat under great teachers. This guy has learned from God. This guy does know the holy because he proves it in the following verses. Who hath ascended up into heaven? I know somebody who attempted to ascend up into heaven. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. I will uh, rise above the clouds and above the stars. And I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. And I will be like the most high. I, I know a person that was self-willed. I know a person that says, I, 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 I will, I will. He thought himself to be a great one. So great that he felt entitled to the throne of God. There's a lot of people like that. You brush shoulders with them every day. They think that they're uh, worthy to sit on that throne. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Well, I know of a man who first descended. He descended down from heaven. He came from heaven. His father was from heaven, Jesus Christ. He ascended up into heaven after his resurrection. He also took captivity captive. And, and then also not only did he descend from heaven to this earth, but he also that ascended first descended. He descended into the lower parts of the earth. He was there in Abraham's bosom. He got the keys of death and hell. He also preached to the spirits that were bound, sometimes disobedient. And then he took those Old Testament saints and he also took the tree of life and Abraham's bosom and he moved people and a place all the way up to the third heaven. He descended and then he also ascended and no man have ever ascended but Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you can try to ascend up into heaven. You can try to be like those of the Tower of Babel. You can try to be like Satan, but you are going to be cast down who hath gathered the wind in his fist who was there at that creation who by the word of his power spoke all things into existence that is Jesus Christ he he said he spoke the words and, and the universe was created he spoke the words and the earth was recreated and he spoke and he breathed and he breath he breathed in the breath of life into Adam and, and man became a living soul and he performed that operation and he took that rib from Adam and he created the woman and you know what he also can hold the wind in his fists. Who can do this? I believe this is speaking of Jesus Christ, the same that ascended and descended. Who have bound the waters in a garment? kind of interesting there and we're not talking about the waters that are below in a garment but he holds those back by the word of his power but then he also created a firmament to hold back those waters that are beyond the heaven you know there is in the old uh, in the in the Jewish model of this earth there is the earth and it appears to be flat oh no I'm turning you off right now. Flat. The surface of the earth is flat, but then just because it's flat doesn't mean it's a pancake out in space as those that try to mock somebody that believes the Bible would say, well, you know what? They believe NASA more than they believe the word of God. And God said that he founded this earth on a foundation and it was pillars. He had the pillars of the earth and he says that the earth will not move. And he says 
that beneath that surface of the earth is hell beneath and Abraham's bosom so in that Jewish model you would see underneath the earth a great depths and that you also see water water that's under the earth and then we also see water that's at sea level that connects to the earth and then we see a firmament and he pitched that firmament like a tent to the four corners of the earth four corners as in north south east west and that firmament contains the sun the moon and the stars the stars also yes the stars according to that model that the jews came up with according to the bible he put that sun in that tabernacle that he made and if you pitch that tabernacle and you put a tent up <laughs> at at one point at the center point it's going to be high correct and then over here where it meets the ground it's going to be much less high right and you know that in an old encyclopedia i don't know why i'm going off into this in an old encyclopedia britannica they spoke of the ice wall of antarctica and that according to that model the the uh, the earth is surrounded by ice and that's where the firmament meets and that the the air or the oh excuse me the uh the the atmosphere is very short before it hits a wall a, a ceiling it hits something hard a firmament and it speaks of it only being uh like possibly i think it was like 15,000 feet high much much shorter than than what the, the airplanes fly in if you if you look in and you know i'm i'm just speaking as a brutish man i don't know anything you know what i just believe the bible but you know what that god sitteth upon the circle of the earth i believe he sits right above that firmament right above that water and then there is also another firmament and that's that sea of glass and it's like ice so there's 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 a firmament and another firmament and then there's god sitting there but what's in between it waters and these waters are held back by a garment something that is described as a garment and you know that the heavens will be rolled up like a garment or you spread them out like a garment or like a tent you know it's funny i've told some people that i believe in a flat universe a flat universe because when he talks about rolling up that universe or that he, he will roll it up like a scroll it's something flat you know that even the scientists speak of speak of the fabric of the universe being flat and that they spoke they speak of planets and all this that have gravity and bring down that fabric the fabric comes down where those are at I, I'm just speaking as a brutish man. I, nobody taught me anything. I mean, you know what? But God will reveal these things to you. You say that's not important. Well, it's pretty important. You know, the, the scientists speak of a expanding universe. And the reason why they speak of an expanding universe is because the Big Bang, because nothing exploded and created everything. And that from that big explosion, the universe is still expanding. Do you believe them or do you believe the Bible? Do you believe that the earth is flying through the universe? I forget what speed, but thousands and thousands of miles an hour. And why would it be traveling so fast? Where is it going? I don't know. Outward from where the Big Bang started. So we got an expanding universe and we're flying at thousands of miles an hour. And we're also spinning at thousands of miles an hour or hundreds of miles an hour, I believe. I forget the exact number. Um, it's just going off the top of my head here. But yet you don't feel it. Hmm. You got a lot of faith. Or you're pretty gullible. I believe that the earth is stationary. I believe the earth is his footstool. And you know a footstool wouldn't be much of use if it was spinning rapidly or flying away from you. And you'd have a hard time putting your feet in that footstool, wouldn't you? But if it was stationary, most people that have a footstool have a stationary foot, footstool that's not moving. 
and they put their feet on it. And I believe that the earth is his footstool. Well, you take things awfully literal, Josh. Well, I'm just a brutish man, and you can turn me off, and you can laugh me to scorn, you know, that there will be mockers in the last day. <laughs> there is a lot of mockers. And you know, there's nothing more mocked than if you were to say that the earth is flat. So what I was speaking of, a flat surface of the earth, and then it's deep. And, and, and picture an orange if you cut the top of the orange off and it's all still round and, and it's got a, a curvature to it. And then you put it almost invisible type of glass or firmament above that and it's encapsulated in there. Almost like a snow globe. And then yet it's still round. <laughs> We still got a sphere if you want to be so big on a sphere. Though the Bible says the circle of the earth, and then they try to turn that into a sphere. And in the same book, it says ball. God could have used the word ball, or he could have used the word sphere, but he used the word circle. Don't change the Bible. Don't, you know what? Then you think you're learned. You think you're so wise. You think you're so intelligent, and God will not reveal things to you. He reveals things to babes and sucklings. He reveals things to those that trust in his word even more so than their own eyesight oh I, I trust my eyesight quite a bit but you know what what's more real to me than the people that I see in the trees and in, in this earth and anything I see with my eyes is God and his word the invisible God and the the proof of the invisible God written about in this word faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God for without faith it is impossible to please God those that come to him have to come to him believing that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him you got to seek the Lord with all your heart and you know that the things that are seen are temporal and the things that are not seen are eternal he is an invisible God and you're not going to see everything so clearly and the things that you do see sometimes your eye can deceive you you know that I look at that moon and it looks fear like a sphere to me, but that doesn't mess me up. You know, it looks like there's curvature to it, and it probably is. It probably is very round and spherical, but that don't mess me up. <laughs> but you know what? You can be mocked for this. You can lose all your meetings for this. You can get zero meetings for this. <laughs> and people can laugh you to scorn. But you know what? God... I believe respects somebody who puts his word first. All the people that argue with me over these things, all I hear is NASA, oh, it's proven, we got pictures from space, and blah, 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 blah. But they don't have any scriptures backing up anything. I believe the word of God. And even if I look like a fool, even if my whole life I'm just some jackass that believes the Bible, I don't care. As long as I stand before God in that day and say, God, I... I kicked against the pricks of this world as they mocked me to scorn. I believed your word. I want to be like Agar, a brutish man, a man that has not the understanding of a man. You say, Josh, you've accomplished your goal because you have no understanding. That's fine. That's fine. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Or who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Or who hath bound the waters in a garment? So those waters were bound by some sort of garment or some sort of firmament that held back the waters. And then the windows of heaven were opened up in Noah's day and a bunch of water that's above the, the clouds and above the stars came down and flooded this earth. And I believe it was the second time this earth was flooded that there was a flood even before that, somewhere between Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? You mean there's ends of the earth? There isn't if it's a, a sphere that you could just keep going around, there's no end to the thing. You know, it's also very weird that you are not allowed to go to Antarctica. You know, that they limit you from going certain places. <laughs> Why is that off limits? But space is not off limits. Huh. 
And if you believe all those images that you see from space of planets and everything that are so perfectly uh, shown, I, you know that's a lot of computer images. Just about as much as if you go and you see the rubble being picked up, I believe it was in, in Ukraine, and people carrying around, a woman carrying around styrofoam, basically, big old slabs of concrete, but yet in one arm carrying it around a whole bunch of big rocks and you're pretty you're pretty gullible I mean <laughs> you believe everything your eyes see do you okay we'll see where that gets you <laughs> what is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell so we're speaking of a man that and what, you say a man yeah what is his son's name God the creator has a son according to Agar here in Proverbs 30 why did the Jews miss it why did the Jews miss the Messiah why did they miss their Messiah and and say there's no way that God can have a son why did the fatalists believe that God could not possibly manifest himself in the flesh and they changed the Bible origin and those Greek philosophers <laughs> there's no way that God can ascend or descend to this earth in the form of a man they say it's an impossibility but yet he did it But and they missed him they missed their Messiah and, it, and there's no reason why they should have because what is his name Jesus they shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins they shall call his name Emmanuel which is being interpreted God with us what is his son's name if thou canst tell isn't that amazing that, that verse 4 just kind of blows my mind that that's even in there I think a lot of us we read our Bible awfully quick and we have missed that wonderful prophecy every word of God is pure and you better believe it is you're not going to get anything from this book if you believe otherwise at the very least you'll get very little maybe some surface things but not the deep things of God the spirit searcheth the deep things of God yea the deep things of God search of no man but the spirit and we see the spirit of God in Genesis chapter number one over the face of the deep the deep things of God you got the spirit of God you need to ask the spirit of God the author of this book this pure book reveal to me truths reveal to me the secret things reveal to me great nuggets of wisdom why so I can sound smart in arguments no 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 so I can teach others so I can live according to the words of God man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God and if you value every word you say what about those things about the earth uh, apparently being flat or looking like it's flat and all this and well that's not important you know well, who cares well you know it's pretty important there's a lot written about it there's a lot more written about the earth and about the creation than there is about baptism <laughs> every word of God is pure don't just say this ain't important because it's not salvation. Only salvation is important. Only the gospel is important. Well, the Bible is not a pamphlet with containing just the gospel. Yes, it is important. It's very important to us as we are recipients of the gospel, uh, those that receive him. He is a savior of all men, especially of those that believe. He is your savior today. If you're not saved, there's only one savior and he is made himself available to all men and if you will seek the Lord with all your heart you will find him if you will turn from sin to the Savior he will receive you he said whosoever will come unto me I will in no wise cast out you want salvation you want eternal life it's in his son eternal life is to know the son and to know the father but you cannot know God the father or be reconciled to God the father without the son kiss the son lest he be angry through Jesus Christ his shed blood you gotta go to that cross you have to humble yourself before that cross receive the love of the truth for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish 
You shouldn't perish, not when you have a Savior. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that everlasting life, there's a little bug flying around here, is starts at a certain point. It's at the point of salvation when you believe the gospel. At that moment, you receive everlasting life from that point through eternity, through the rest of eternity. <laughs> And then you also get eternal life when you believe the gospel. You are not the possessor of eternal life until the point of salvation. You say, well, I have had eternal life since before the foundation of the world because God chose me. I don't know why he would choose me. Why would he ever choose me, someone like me, before the foundation of the world? You did not exist before the foundation of the world. But I know somebody who did. Agar speaks with him here. Him that was there and holds the wind in his fists, who spoke the worlds into existence, the Son of God, before he was a son, before when he was called the Word of God. He existed. But you didn't exist before the foundation of the world. You were not some spirit floating around there in heaven. And God says, I chose you before the foundation of the world to be saved, to go to heaven, is what the Calvinist says. You know, they try to receive this through teachers and through <laughs> colleges and through man's wisdom, through philosophy, that's fatalism and you know, that's Calvinism. It's John Calvin. I'm going to look at John Calvin's words, and then I'm going to look at the Bible, and I'm going to interpret the Bible according to John Calvin's words. You're not going to learn wisdom. You're not going to get understanding that way. God's not going to give you any revelation. He reveals it to babes. You know, God has chosen us in him in him is the key before the foundation of the world that we should be conformed and we're predestinated to be what conformed what's our destination it doesn't say destination either we are destined predestined what is my destiny I am destined for great things. Why? Because I have chosen Christ as my Savior. And if I choose him, God will choose me. And if I get placed in him, in the body of Christ, when I believe the gospel, I, am, I have been given everlasting life at that moment and also eternal life. Once I, by faith, get placed in him before the foundation of the world, I have eternal life. But it's in time that I make that decision and I have eternal life and everlasting life at the same time. Just chew on that for a while. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. You know, and it's easy to trust God with our soul and, and our salvation and where God will take us to heaven when we die. But you know, it's a much harder thing to walk the narrow way and to trust God each and every day to to teach you to to teach you to be humble to teach you to trust him that he will provide that he will meet and supply all your needs that he will get you through the hard time when you're shook up when you don't understand what is God doing you can trust that all things work for good, together for good, to those who are the called, to, to those who, who love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose. What's his purpose? I'm called. Called to what? To go to heaven? Called to salvation. Called to sanctification. Called to be conformed to the image of his son. If you are on board with that, if you have received that truth and you are saved and you want you love God enough to, to take your hands off your life and say, help me, Lord, to be conformed more and more to your image each and every day. God said, I will make everything work out for good for you. 
Well, this is a tough situation I'm going through. There's no possible way good could come of this. Oh, it will. You know why? Because God said it. God said it in his word. His word is pure. Yea, let God be true and every man a liar. Trust in the word of God. Trust in him. He's your shield. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Add thou not unto his words. So we got a different versions of the Bible that add to the word of God. They take away from the word of God. This ought to be kindergarten. This ought to be common knowledge. There's one word of God for the English speaking people, and that is the King James Bible. And there are those that add to the word and take away from the word, and they are found to be liars. There's a lot of contradictions you can find in other versions, but you will not find any in this book. It is pure. It is purified, matter of fact, seven times in a furnace of earth. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. He didn't say that he expects you to. We ought to keep the word of God, but the, the ultimate keeper of the word is God himself. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. What good is a word of God that is pure only in, in the originals that nobody obtained? Nobody has ever read the originals. You may find an original document of one single book, but there is no originals as far as a, a accumulation of all the scriptures in one original package, in one book. It's eclectic. It's pieces here, pieces there. And you have to put faith and trust that God didn't leave it up to man to get all this right, but that he will make these words pure and he will purify them in a furnace of earth seven times. And we see the different versions, excuse me, not versions, but different uh, languages the Bible has been interpreted in. And then we see it put in the English language and then we see each English language pretty much get burned up when there's a heavy persecution to the church. Uh, and we see many martyrs getting burned, holding copies of the word of God. And then we see a version, which I believe to be the seventh version of the English in the English language, the King James Bible. So it's purified seven times where in a furnace of earth, they burn it up, but they can't get a, get rid of the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And you know what it is? It's my shield. I put my trust in it. It's pure. It ain't going to lead me astray. I don't question it. This book, I read it and it reads me and it's meant not for me to correct, but for it to correct me and set me straight, not for me to set it straight. <laughs> you say, well, I found a contradiction here and I'll show you a contradiction there and, and, and I, I see where this part should have been translated this. You're not going to reveal anything. You know why? Because you're the wise and prudent and God does not reveal it to you. He will reveal it to Agar, the brutish man. The man that didn't go to the Bible college. The man that's, you know, looks looked upon as a fool. It doesn't matter. God does not need your brains. God does not need your intellect. God needs your humility. And then he can reveal things, great things to you. And he also needs you not to be lazy. He needs you to get in his book and dig in there and, and actually show to him that it, it is important in your life, that it's the most important thing in your life. And he will reveal great things to you add thou not unto his words lest he reprove thee and thou be found a liar there's going to be a lot of those that add to the word of god and they are added the plagues that are written in that book in revelation and they will also they take away from the word of god their name will be taken away out of the book of life what a serious book i would never mess with this book don't touch this book don't add to it don't take away from it Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. You know what? I think we're going to stop there. We've covered quite a bit of ground. I'm not sure how long I was going, but I think it's sufficient. And uh, we'll try to finish off the rest next time. This has been Approved unto God. I hope you've gleaned some truths. I hope that you were able to stay with me even through the gap theory and the flat earth stuff and... <laughs> That shouldn't shake you up. 
you know, get in the Word of God for yourself. Don't just read somebody's book. Read this book. Meditate on this book. Say, God, I, I'm willing to believe things in this book no matter how the world treats me, no matter how much they make fun of me. You know what? I got to give an account to God at the end of my life. Not to you. Not to my mom. Not to my dad. Not to my teachers. Not to my preacher. To God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman. It takes some work to study. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. All the truth is not found in one spot. It's here a little, there a little. You got to search it out and God will reveal great things to you if you have a humble heart like Agar and you will be a teacher of the word if God sees you are interested in learning and teaching. God will show you. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Trust him. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you all.